Excellent. I, uh, I think we'll look to begin, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to uh, the next uh, of the webinars in the Admiral Markets Trading Spotlight uh, series. Uh, today, we're here to talk about a versatile swing trading strategy. And this is the second part of a session that we uh, we started, uh, I think probably about a month or so ago, maybe for sort of uh, four to eight weeks ago. And uh, we're just looking to just add a couple of additional bits and help you build upon it and, and help gain, uh, help you gain a sort of a deeper understanding of what we're actually looking for in terms of a... Uh, the swing trading strategy itself. Um, if you are uh, already a swing trader, then uh, excellent. Thanks for joining us. I hope you'll uh, you'll hope you'll find it useful. Um, it would help me if you'd be just so kind enough to put in the chat box just you know what your uh, trading experience is. Maybe you're an intraday trader. Maybe you're a position trader. Maybe you're a swing trader. Uh, you know maybe you've been uh, you know trading for a good while. Maybe you've just you know you're new to trading. If you can just uh, ping away that in the, the chat box, that uh, that actually helps me. It just make sure I can. Uh, understand the uh, the kind of level of the the room we have here so i can uh, so i can sort of cover the uh, the necessary topics with the with the right amount of uh, content detail but as always uh, we you know we love having you here okay you know my myself and my colleagues here at admiral markets you know we're happy for uh, for questions and points so if you're uh, with us today just feel free to put uh, questions into the chat box or if you're watching this later on demand on the uh, admiral markets youtube channel or facebook page then please you know if you're enjoying it give us a like or if you've got uh, comments or uh, ideas even for topics that you'd like to see uh, us talk about in the future please feel free to uh, to sort of uh, ping that away in the uh, in the uh, in the comments box where yeah we you know, we, uh, we enjoy the interaction it's great to uh, it's great to see you all here joining us today so uh, what are we going to talk about? Well, as I said, we're going to build on some of the concepts covered in part one. We're going to add some additional details here, session by session, so that you can just start to build yourself a, a proper uh, and fully sort of uh, fully uh, uh, suitable swing trading strategy. And you know, we'll just recap those kind of salient points we talked about in the previous session. If if you're joining us for the first time, you haven't uh, been able to see those before, then please, you know, you'll find that the uh, part one is in the uh, kind of webinar archive on YouTube and on uh, uh, and on the Facebook page and also in Traders Yard and as I said we're going to update it a little bit today to add just a couple of additional details so that we can improve our options and uh, with time what we'll do is we'll look to uh, to sort of learn uh, look at the live markets have a little look at some of the ideas we have there so uh, Ed says yep yeah, he's a swinging intraday trader with a little bit of uh, experience thanks for that Ed. Jacqueline says she's still learning low volatility making trading difficult it's interesting we will uh, maybe touch upon that as we look at live markets, Jacqueline, and that uh, Samuel says he's uh, he's new to uh, new to trading. Okay, so uh, yeah, as I said, just uh, ping away. You know, we we enjoy the interaction. It uh, helps us uh, helps us all, and we want to want you to get the most values you can from these trading spotlight webinar sessions. So um, uh, uh, what we've got here is also is that you know, appreciate that, you know, you're only with us here for a short time during the day. And and actually, you know, we appreciate that traders are always looking for uh, additional sort of support with their uh, with their trading. And so, you know, this is your opportunity to go across and uh, join the exclusive trading spotlight uh, community. And I, and I mention it here and now because after today's session, I'll be in the uh, trading traders yard uh, room for uh, trading spotlights for about half an hour or so so if you've got questions or if you've got particular uh, things that you'd like to sort of me to talk about then please you know join us there and uh, you know I'll be very happy to very happy to have a chat with you about your uh, about your own trading and you can do that by you can register that with uh, on tradersyard.com and you can find the trading spotlight group at uh, tradersyard.com forward slash group forward slash 312 and as I said I'll be in there after this session uh, and you'll be very welcome to join me for a yeah for a chat there. So uh, Andre's just got a, a question there. He says, hi, Paul, just wanted to ask, how did you insert previous day high low and previous week high low lines levels, which I saw on your uh, charts on your webinar uh, approximately about 14 days ago? Okay, uh, thanks, Andre. Uh, I think that is you're talking about one of the uh, intraday trading uh, sessions that uh, that we did here on Trading Spotlight. Um, what I actually have is I have a... Uh, uh, I have a simple uh, indicator that uh, that actually helps me draw those lines and levels on 
there, Andre. Uh, it's it's there's nothing um, there's uh, nothing uh, secretive or esoteric about it. If you uh, if you look on uh, you know most of the uh, MT4 and MT5 indicators available, you should be able to find that there. There's nothing uh, there's nothing proprietary or special about me about that. I, I was uh, um, you can find that uh, indicator out there. So also as I said, you can uh, find my colleague there has just uh, pinged up the the link to get involved with the uh, Traders Yard. And as I said, you, you'd be very welcome to join us. Okay, and uh, I'll be very happy to continue the conversation uh, there if it helps support you. So, uh, as I said, uh, my name is Paul Wallace, okay, uh, after a career in the military, and then I started trading many years ago, and, uh, you know, I've been fortunate to trade for both hedge funds and high net worth clients. Primarily, my own trading is focused on FX indices and commodities, uh, and I like to trade trends for my swinging positions, uh, and then mean reversion trading for my uh, intraday trading, which is uh, which is the uh, the session that uh, Andre was just asking about there, which is, I say, they're all available there on the uh, uh, on the sort of uh, Facebook page and the YouTube channel for Admiral Markets. And of course, Admiral Markets, they are a, a Forex broker with, with uh, a Forex and CFD broker with over 8,000 financial instruments available for you to trade with uh, offices in over 20 countries, uh, providing local support and global expertise. They are uh, licensed and regulated in, uh, in many uh, uh, environments across the, uh, the globe and they uh, provide competitive spreads on the popular trading instruments there, as you can see, like Euro, Dollar, and DAX 30. And you're able to engage with markets on the uh, most popular trading platforms, MT4 and MT5, which are available on, in both uh, being able to trade from your phone, your desktop, your browser, and they also provide the uh, trading uh, the sort of their own <coughs> their own uh, additional plugin, which is uh, is useful for uh, for those of you who are uh, uh, trading actively on uh, on MT4 or MT5. If you have any questions, as always, you can uh, get in touch with your account representative, and they'll be very very happy to guide you. So, uh, you know, here we are, versatile swing trading strategy, okay? Lots of people look for ways to swing trade markets, but they may not be aware of how to do it. And, and a lot of that is very simple, is that, you know, there's lots of traders who are uh, still operating in a trading around their day job, okay? So, they, you know, they don't have the, uh, the ability to sit there intraday all day, but they are looking for ways that they can engage in the markets, either on a, on a swing basis, either around their particular uh, day jobs, or, you know, where it only takes a small amount of... Uh, time during the actual day to uh, to sort of uh, uh, quickly check a market and, and take a trade. So, uh, you know, we said we share a simple swing trading strategy that allow you to engage a wide range of markets and, uh, and you know, we'll be focused on the four hour chart as our main execution time frame. but, you know, uh, you know, you can utilize sort of daily one and maybe even the hourly one, depending upon your, uh, your particular risk profile and your time limitations, but we'll be focusing primarily on the four hour chart. And in today in part four, we're just going to share a few additional rules to help sharpen your understanding of the strategy. Uh, and we'll be uh, uh, adding a few additional triggers that you can utilize and, and bring into your trading army. So it gives you the opportunity to take a few more uh, trade shots as they, uh, as they pass. So, you know, we talked about last time, okay, and it's kind of worth, uh, you know, sort of uh, remembering that is that we talked about, you know, ultimately what I'm looking to do is to, is to help you become a versatile trader, right? That's what I want you to be able to be, okay? So um, what does that actually mean? Is my aim for you is to be a versatile trader, trader so that you have the ability to trade any instrument on any time frame in any direction using high reward risk setups to create positive expectancy with asymmetric reward to risk ratios, okay? So, you know, what we find is that, you know, you, you might actually find that you have a particular, uh, find that you have a, uh, a particular uh, penchant for trading, maybe four hour charts, maybe you are a particular intraday trader, maybe you like trading the commodities over, uh, over the FX, okay? But I think if you have a, if you have a skill base, a versatile skill base that allows you to trade any instrument on any time frame in any direction well then that actually provides you with a you know a, a wealth base okay you know a wealth base of, of of knowledge and and talent and skill that you can employ however markets change because they because they do change ladies and gentlemen all right so you know many years ago people would you know just simply trade uh, for example they would trade the euro dollar on the five minute chart and that that's literally all they would trade uh, you know, and they'd be able to do okay at that. But you know, what I find is that you know, markets are markets are much more dynamic these days. Okay, and you know, in, in some 
much basically they're much more dynamic but also there are periods and times when okay that where the volatility goes quite flat all right and invariably if you're just trading i don't know euro dollar five minute chart when at a time when euro dollar is is a little bit uh, lacking in volatility and is just uh, is just range bound well then you're gonna you're going to struggle okay most traders would struggle doing that whereas if you have as i say that kind of you know that kind of skill base to be able to trade any instrument on any time frame in any direction well, that, that allows you to evolve. It allows you to adapt to market conditions. It allows you to also to adapt to your own changes, okay, in your own, in your own circumstances as you, uh, as you present, progress through uh, your own lives, okay? So it's about having those skill sets that allow you to, to be a versatile trade. And that's what I'm trying to share myself in these particular sessions. And then as we go through them, well, you know, we'll look, we'll, we'll look at how to hone them, how to basically uh, focus them upon particular, uh, maybe particular times, maybe particular instruments that, you know, that, that resonate with yourself in terms of your own uh, your own trading progression. So, with regards to the kind of versatile trader, four-hour swing trader, you know, we just had very simple standard chart setup. All right, twenty period, fifty period, and two hundred period moving average, and we also had fractals. I appreciate some people may not understand fully fractals i'll show you where you can find them on the charts when we uh, when we look at that but you know what we have and me and my colleagues have done quite a few uh, webinars on the uh, the use of moving averages so if you're if you are very new to trading and trying to understand what moving averages are then i would please suggest that you go back and uh, sort of uh, revisit the uh, trading spotlight uh, uh, webinars in the archive and there you'll be able to find a you know, a huge wealth of actually of, of great, uh, great information and knowledge that you can utilize to, to help raise your own awareness about, uh, about trading and markets. But, you know, our charts were very simple, 20, 50 and 200 period moving average with fractals as well, which we'll uh, talk about how we use them later. But what we also had is we also had the slow stochastic indicator on the weekly and the four hour chart, okay, with settings of 955. And we'll, uh, we'll show you how that uh, we set that up. You know, and your step, your first step, okay, which to be fair, should be your first step, whatever you're trading, okay, whatever your kind of style of trading, whatever you're trying to achieve as a trader is, that step one is almost like it's, it's like a ubiquitous step, which you should be doing whenever you open a chart, you should be looking to draw on levels of support and resistance, any particular patterns and any particular big round number levels from the monthly, the weekly and the daily charts as normal. So that shouldn't, you know, that shouldn't really matter whether you're an intraday trader, whether you're a four hour trader, whether you're a commodities trader, whether you're a crypto trader, whether you're an FX trader. It's simply a case of as soon as you open any chart, okay, any chart, that is what you should be doing. That it should be, you know, just your ubiquitous step. It should be part of your automatic process, all right? You just draw on support and resistance levels, draw on any significant patterns and any big round numbers levels from the monthly, the weekly, the daily down. So that just gives you a picture. You're starting to build a picture. It also helps you build a routine. It also helps you get you into a process of uh, that you can work your way through. Okay, on all of those elements, which me and my colleagues Jens and Marcus have touched upon, you know, regularly through these sessions, is, you know, those are the things that help you develop and evolve as a uh, as a trader. So uh, Vincenzo says their technical analysis is agnostic. It works on any asset. You're absolutely right, Vincenzo. And thanks as always for your uh, for your input. It's always uh, it's always uh, appreciated, and it is absolutely right. You know, and uh, you know the kind of setups that I like to try and share with share with people. I talked about them being time frame and instrument agnostic. Okay, that's where you want to be. All right. You know, as I said, you might you might end up just wanting to like this, just wanting to be a trader on the monthly charts, and that's fine if that's what works for you, if that suits for you. But you know, it's having a, a set of skills that you can employ on any on any instrument and on any time frame and if you can do that that will give you great confidence it will give you great self-belief that will help you in your own trading journey so you know we just said there okay you know versatile trader monthly weekly daily charts this is a kiwi dollar chart month just go on just start drawing in those levels of you know those significant levels of support and resistance and any other patterns you might see in any particular uh, big round numbers that you see or uh, particularly uh, uh, well respected by you know by price action so that's you know that's that kind of first stop and that's what we're looking at constantly 
coach on the side of the way, so I can hopefully see. Uh, and so I said, you're drawing on those support and resistance patterns and levels for monthly, weekly, daily trough. And I can't, you know, I can't reinforce that enough to you, ladies and gentlemen. It should be your first step, whatever you do. But then what we're going to do is we're going to start to select instruments that have the following in place, right? And this, this is what's key, okay? So for longs, okay, for trades, if you want to be buyers, what we want to see is the weekly momentum is bullish, you know, and also the four hour has the 20 and 50 in alignment along with weekly momentum. What does that mean? Well, that just means the stochastic, okay? Stochastic is, is basically is heading up, okay? The, uh, the sort of the signal is over the stochastic line, okay? And we're, we're heading up and the basically also price action is, uh, is kind of above the 20 and 50 on the, the four hour charts, right? And it's the flip side, okay? And now, you know, for shorts, well, we just need to see the weekly momentum bearish and at four hours of price of the 20 and the 50 in alignment with weekly momentum. And that just means that you know, the, now the stochastic is heading down, okay? There you can see it's very, it's very clear, which we'll look at in a moment. And also price is beneath the 20 and 50, right? And that it's basically there is in alignment with that. And as I said there, that weekly momentum is defined by the uh, weekly stochastic indicator. So let me just, uh, hopefully on the next chart, this is what we can see here. So uh, this is the weekly chart on the Kiwi dollar. And let me just use the drawing tool here to try and make it a little bit clearer, a little bit help you with uh, the understanding. You know, well, you might say, well, you know, why is that, Paul? What, how does that help us? What are we looking to do? Well, you know, most people use the stochastic, okay? Most people use the stochastic to sort of give you an indication of, you know, when price might be, as in here, overbought or oversold, okay? That's what most people will use, um, the, you know, any kind of oscillator for, right? And, uh, you know, and that's okay. It's, it's, you know, it's, um, you know, what you will find if you trade for a while, but, you know, instruments can, just because an instrument might be overbought or uh, oversold doesn't mean the market's going to turn. It can actually mean that, uh, you know, it can stay overbought and oversold for a long time. But what we're actually using this is, we're using stochastic here as kind of an indicator of momentum. Think of it like the, um, think of it like, you know, the underlying current, okay, in the, uh, you know, in the, uh, in the ocean, okay, it's, you know, it's, it's the underlying current, okay. And so when we see, okay, that the, when we see, for example, here, okay, we can see the, the sort of the, the slower stochastic line, the, the, sorry, the signal line, the stochastic line is crossing. Okay, when it's crossing there, okay, the faster line is crossing beneath the slower line. Well, then, you know, that's where I'm drawing in kind of a, yeah, that's where I'm drawing in a red vertical line on my MetaTrader, because what that does is that gives me an indication, okay, that what we have is, in this particular case, we've got weekly momentum is bearish, okay, so that's what we're uh, particularly looking at. Uh, and when it crosses above here, okay, well, then, you know, then I'm crossing, I draw a green line, okay, because that reminds me or gives me an opportunity to see that actually momentum is now going to turn bullish for a while, okay, the sort of the tide of the current is, uh, is changing, okay, and I want to change with that. So that is why we're looking to use this stochastic, okay, that's what we're using about it, okay. So um, the, the thing I would say is, of course, you're using the, you know, the weekly chart, then what you're looking to do is it's not going to capture the exact turning point because it's a weekly chart, it will actually sort of turn quite slowly. What we're looking to do is this isn't about trying to pick reversals, this is about trying to sort of capture sort of parts of trends. That's what we're looking to do here, okay? We're a swing trader, we're looking to just capture sort of parts of, uh, of trends that will allow us to just take Take a uh, to take a uh, a good couple of trades in alignment with the uh, with the underlying trend with the underlying current. I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight the current. Okay, you'll have known yourself if you've been out swimming in the ocean. You know, if you try and fight the current, that all that happens is you're you know you're likely to uh, you're likely to lose. We don't want to do that. We just want to know where is the underlying current. We want to try and surf with that. That's actually what we want to do. We don't want to fight it. We want to surf with it. So remember what I said, okay? You're drawing on those levels of monthly, daily, monthly, weekly, and daily charts, and then we're looking for particularly for instruments, okay, that have uh, longs where you've got, you know, weekly momentum is bullish, and the four-hour price and twenty and fifty are in alignment with that weekly momentum. For shorts, it's where the weekly momentum has turned down, it's turned bearish, and the four-hour chart has priced the twenty and fifty in alignment with that weekly momentum. Then what we talked about was, you know, you could talk about the first simple thing is to just four hour chart, just trade all of the pin bars. And if you wanted to, you could use a 50% pullback entry on that palm bar. 
depending upon your uh, particular risk appetite. And that's what we were talking about last time. Let me just draw that in. I appreciate for uh, for the new traders here. So you know, here in this actually in this particular example, we've got uh, we've got two examples here. So price is in an uptrend. Okay, prices, you know, they the, will also have the momentum in alignment. And then actually what we see is that price price pulls back to the 20 period moving average, uh, and then it actually creates ourselves a, a pin bar. And what we talked about was, you know, if you wish to be, you know, quite the aggressive trader, and uh, quite the aggressive trader, well then actually what we'd be looking to do is to, to have our entry down here around about that kind of 50 period, okay, and then sort of 50 period, 50% um, pullback, of that existing bar okay so in here we get our trigger here and our stop goes beneath the lows and then what we're actually be looking to do is we'd actually be looking that that becomes our that becomes our trade risk what we're actually looking to do is to basically target the 261 fib extension there okay and i appreciate some people might not fully understand that and uh, i'll show you that how it's uh, drawn on my uh, charts when we move across to the live charts but uh, if you want to know more about that well um, i did a uh, webinar on that uh, you know about a month two months ago on uh, how to use the uh, uh, sort of fib tools the fibonacci tools on metatrader uh, four and five so uh, if you don't uh, fully understand that then what i'd suggest is that you go back to your uh, Go back to the uh, webinar archive and you'll find you'll be able to find out how to use Fibonacci on the uh, MT4 and MT5 uh, platforms and do that to actually look at how to uh, um, truly fully understand that. So <clears throat> that's what we were looking at there again. I think we were just looking at this kind of Kiwi dollar there again. We were just talking about here, if we draw on. Here, is that you know we can see here you know when I've drawn on my vertical line okay to show that I know that there was you know we had we had bearish momentum okay this red is going down but you can see yourself the price action price is in a nice trend okay it's the 20 the 50 and even the 200 okay that's all in uh, nice alignment okay it's all in nice alignment until it isn't when it actually you can see the 20 crosses above the 50 and price is on that pullback there okay and uh, when price then price re-enters okay so now we're back here we've still got weekly bearish momentum we can see that here that hasn't changed but actually now we've got price action we've got the 20 the 50 in alignment all the way up until actually what happens is we can see that on a weekly basis is that the actual the momentum turned to to bullish and it's interesting that we saw that you know the momentum turned bullish and then we actually got quite a clear this is sort of a double bottom one two three pattern reversal and then price started to reverse and then price actually crossed the k okay, the 20 was now above the 50 but then actually now we'd gone from being you know in a, in a bearish trading environment well actually now we were in a kind of a bullish trading environment that's what we're looking at as you know as price had changed as prices as, uh, as price had started to swing around so you know as we said that you know one of the very ways aggressive ways to do is to sort of trade the entry on a uh, on a 50 percent pullback of the actual uh, pin bar so you could place a buy order at the 50 percent of uh, pullback of the pin bar itself or just with the spread in front of it uh, with the stop loss below the low of that particular bar and you set your order for the next three periods only as in if it doesn't trigger within three periods cancel that order uh, and you but you have to be aware that sometimes the trade will you know not go deeper into the bin bar to trigger your order such as life okay you don't we don't try to look to chase price again that was you know we sort of talked about that last time okay now that's quite aggressive all right and there's quite uh, you know aggressive and it's not necessarily for uh, everybody so lots of people just like to sort of trade kind of normal Normal entries, okay, of pin bars, and only a break of the uh, of the high with the stop beneath the low, and that's that's perfectly acceptable, okay. A part of it trading is about understanding what your risk profile is. But for those of you who are looking to, uh, you know, sort of trade a little bit, you know, a little bit more uh, um, uh, sort of accepting of risk in terms of that, well, then that provided one way to actually sort of uh, one way to actually sort of engage and trade the uh, the market. And this was the kind of interesting thing we want to sort of talk about and add. We didn't really sort of maybe touch it on it as much as that we were talking about using the 261 fib extension as your uh, as your target. That's what we were particularly uh, that's what we we're particularly interested in. But you know what we wanted to also just confirm is that you know when price hits the 161 Fibonacci extension, 
that is when you can use move your stock to break even and that's what we'll, we'll look at in a moment it's easier for me to sort of show that on the live charts and we'll, we'll switch across the live charts in a moment and that's easier to show and actually how that works for us okay but we're looking to use a 261 fib extension target but actually when price hits the 161 fib extension that is when you can move your stock to, to break even and then then you're into uh, effectively a free trade and that's, you know, that's what traders like, especially new traders, because it gives them a feeling of relief. It gives them a feeling of, uh, of you know, that they're uh, making progress, that actually, you know, that the trade is, a, is, is at worst going to be a break-even trade. And that's, that's, what they're, that's what they're particularly happy with for new traders. <clears throat> so, you know, what we talked about here, this always happens every week, is that I have uh, sensitive time, sensitive, sensitive motion lights um, that uh, actually shut off after about half an hour. Uh, and, uh, you know, what we talked about was that, you know, in this particular example, you know, on the Kiwi dollar here, we, we knew that we had bearish momentum. We knew that you could see prices in a trend. It's very clear. Okay, I say it every week. That, you know, when price is in a good trend, a good trend leaps off the chart. You don't have to, you don't have to fuss about. It, you don't have to sort of try and force it. And when you do try and force it, well, then that basically, you know, that's a, that's a, that in itself is a sign that it's probably not a particularly good, uh, not a particularly good trend. It's probably not one at all. And we talked about, you know, here there's just lots of examples, but you know, there was, you know, there's there were failed trades here. Okay, there was, you know, four, five failed trades in that very aggressive period against the sort of one, two, three, four, five, six seven eight nine ten eleven trades okay so you had you had sort of you know you had uh, sort of ten or eleven trades there okay and, and four trades that you know clearly clearly sort of failed okay and that's that's you know that's that's you know that's to be expected there are no there's no such things perfection we always try to hear there was no you know if you're looking for a a, a trading strategy with a hundred percent success rate well then you're going to be very 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 uh, disappointed you know there's just trading markets are dynamic they move for you and against you and it's actually about being able to make sure that you're you're on the trying to kind of right side of the, the market okay and the right side of the market it's not being on the long side of the short side it's just being on the right side of the market which is not trying to fight it it's trying to surf with it okay when the opportunity comes your way and that's what we're uh, very big on trying to stress to, to people who join us for the trading spotlights sessions you know we talked about how uh, you know the, those kind of lots of uh, opportunities in terms of you know we can see there's quite a lot there as a as price move but then actually the sort of 20 crossed above the 50 didn't it and actually we got quite a strong pullback and then what we saw was price sort of re-engaged okay we're still we know it hasn't changed okay stochastics is still you know on, from the weekly it's still sort of bearish and now we're back okay we're back into this sort of trend so this was just a bit of a, a much bigger pullback okay on the four hour chart before the dominant south trend has sort of re-exerted itself uh, and once again okay we had trade setups as, as price sort of pulled back into uh, into its thing into a into a resistance and then until we saw that actually you know the the, the weekly momentum changed weekly momentum changed followed by a very uh, followed by you know in a, a sort of a bullish engulfing candle as part of a double bottom the one two three pattern before price before price ran away to its uh, to itself Vincenzo just talked about uh, how there's some nice uh, uh, bearish divergence on the 4th of September um, uh, the 4th of September let's uh, have a look at that yes there was yep you're absolutely right that's nice that's a uh, yeah that's a that's a good point maybe maybe I'll talk about that in another session okay talking about how to trade divergence I think that's uh, that's a that's a good tool for people to use I'll make a uh, a note of that I'll uh, maybe we'll do that as a uh, as a future session I think that would be a, that would be a useful one for people thanks for that uh, thanks for that Vincenzo so, you know, what we talked about is, you know, having lots of uh, trade setups with regards to pin bars. But also what we wanted to do is I wanted to sort of add additional triggers that you could talk about that you could actually utilize yourself. Now, we've talked quite a lot about price action setups over the, the sort of preceding few months on the uh, trading spotlight series and you know there you will find that the, in particular we had uh, we did some uh, great webinars on specific price action setups and as always so you know I encourage you to go and uh, to go and view them but you know we've used pin bars but you know why don't we also look at using things like inside bars okay or inside bar candlestick pattern so as a quick reminder an inside bar is formed when the high and the low of the bar is fully within the range of the preceding bar okay it's fully 
within the range of the preceding bar, okay? Not, not nudging its head above, but fully within. Sometimes you'll hear them called, you know, the bar here, you know, they might be called as the mother bar or the kangaroo bar, okay? But what you just need to think of it is it's like an organism breathing, okay? You know, we have, uh, we have a, a surge, this is the rest. And then what we're looking to for is, you know, we're looking for, we're looking for the next surge. Again, that's what we're, that's what we're particularly looking for. Okay. That's what we're, that's what we're, um, um, that's what we're hoping for. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. As I said, that's what we're looking to do. We're looking, you know, we're, we're, it's the, the inside bar is the rest and we're waiting for the, the surge, the next move. That's what we're, uh, that's what we're particularly looking for. And there's some examples of it. And I think just that all we need to remember is, is that that is there, okay? Is that is basically, that is not an inside bar because actually, you know, some people just go on the body, but I talk about using the entire range, okay? Because invariably price has traded there at some point and it's a case of that broke the range of the preceding bar. So that is not an inside bar, ladies and gentlemen. So that's uh, just to make that clear for you. But as well as price action signals, well, you know, what we can talk about is also we had inside bar, we can also have the outside bar or engulfing candle, right? And it's the exact opposite of the inside bar. What I mean by that is, you know, it's formed when the high and the low of the bar fully engulf the range of the preceding bar. Okay, you can see that there yourself, right? And I mean fully engulf, okay? Not just the, uh, not just the body, but actually the full range of it engulfs the full range of the preceding bar, okay? And it, it, it happens, uh, it happens infrequently, okay? But, you know, it does, it's a strong signal when it occurs, when it occurs with the confluence of events of it, you know, of, of being in line with other, uh, other elements, right? And it provides traders with a clue to the next possible move. So, as I said, we want to be talking about how we could add, you know, the simple price actions, you know, that we've uh, talked about throughout the series here, start to build that picture, okay? Start to add, add additional uh, opportunities for you, okay? And we can see here, okay, We've just got very strong, okay, very strong. That's what I like to see in engulfing cans. I like to see strong closes, okay. However, they're uh, however they're working, but you know it has to engulf the entire range of the preceding bar, and you know it totally engulf it. And that's what we're looking for, okay. That's what we're looking to actually, uh, yeah, look to actually achieve. So, you know, here's uh, here's your task from today's session, ladies and gentlemen. Is you know. Go ahead and look through your favorite trading instruments. I mean, you know, I always give you a little bit of homework to take away and work on because that's the best way, a bit of deliberate practice. So, you know, try and identify some possible setups in your present markets, all right, where you're combining the weekly momentum with the kind of, uh, with the four hour, uh, with the four hour moves, with the four hour moving averages. Also, you know, we talked about, you know, using price, uh, sorry, pen bars as part of price section. Well, actually, I wanted to add in inside bars and engulfing candles look at see how do they set up when they hit sort of support resistances as, as part of that trend is that an, a, an additional way that you could actually be entering take a look at you know how many of the setups were created and how far did the market move okay how far did it move you know we're we're just looking to take the sort of you know at this particular moment we're just looking to take a, a fib extension of our trade okay to the 261 target but you might find, okay, if you're to look at it, you might find that actually sometimes those trades run and run and run and run. And for those of you who are looking to try and capture those or trying to use, you know, uh, switch, <laughs> trailing stop losses, well, then maybe there's an opportunity there for you to sort of uh, uh, amend the plan to suit your own kind of particular trading style. Something for you to have a little look at and to, uh, to do some of your own research on. So uh, as always, as we said, being a versatile trader, <clears throat> means being able to trade any instrument in any direction on any time frame all right that's what we want to create versatile traders but today we focused on a versatile swing trading strategy where combining weekly momentum with four hour trend and some price action triggers and when you include additional price action triggers like inside bars engulfing candles along with pin bars well you've got the basis of a very simple and versatile trading plan so, you know, that gives us, you know, an extra, it's just additional elements that you can add it into, okay, in terms of moving your stop to break even, okay, once it's hit the 161 FIB extension and being able to add in, you know, additional triggers, okay, like, uh, um, thing, you know, like, <clears throat> like inside bars and engulfing cameras. Uh, Obi Armour, I think I hope I've pronounced that uh, correct. Obi Armour said, I'm new to trading. What would you suggest a newbie like myself do? Um, I would suggest just follow a simple plan like this, Obi Armour, okay? Just, you know, uh, identify some, uh, you know, a, a range of maybe, you know, four to six different instruments. They may be the FX pairs, maybe, you know, some commodity pairs. Maybe it's a little bit of a mix of all. 
and actually just go through, okay, as I said, the step one, just draw in your uh, levels of support and resistance, identify where weekly momentum and the four hour moving averages are in alignment, and then look to utilize that as, uh, as, you know, kind of the filters that allow you to sort of take simple price action triggers in alignment with the, uh, with the four hour trend and the, uh, and the weekly momentum. Hope that helps. So as I said, I'm going to be on the uh, uh, Traders Yard. Okay, I'll be in the Traders Spotlight uh, community group on Traders Yard after this for about half an hour. So if you'd like to join me, you'd be very, very welcome. You know, my uh, colleagues, Marcus and Jens, they are there pretty much, you know, uh, every couple of hours putting up some fantastic, fantastic material there. Okay, so you'll find that, uh, you know, it gives you an opportunity to get some support. What you'll also do is we talk about the upcoming events and some uh, ideas on trading strategies. And also you'll see some of the recordings that we create here. So so it's a, it's a great little spot to give you some community. And as I said, uh, Marcus and Jens are fantastic in, uh, in what, they, uh, what they provide to, uh, to everybody there. And as always, you know, don't forget to join us uh, next time. Well, what we'll have on uh, Wednesday, join my colleague Marcus to talk about copy trading. Is it too good to be true? What Marcus is going to be talking about is effectively, can you copy and paste your way to success? The, the pros and cons of copy trading and how to use copy trading to your uh, particular advantage. So that's going to be uh, this Wednesday, November 27th. Check your inbox for the uh, webinar link or head over to the Admiral Markets page to sort of click on the link for uh, to register for the live webinars. And as always, you'll find lots of analysis and education on the AdmiralMarkets.com website. And if you have any questions, whether you know during this session or if you're watching here on uh, uh, on uh, YouTube or uh, on Traders Yard or on uh, uh, on other social media platforms, you can contact us. Hello at AdmiralMarkets.com. You've got the uh, YouTube.com forward slash Admiral Markets, Facebook.com forward slash Admiral Markets Global. If you're enjoying the content, please you know give us a give us a like, drop us a comment and stuff. We always appreciate it. We always find it really uh, useful. So I hope you found that useful. I hope that's just added a few extra little filters and a few little additional ways to, to sort of look how you could build a sort of very simple, versatile trading strategy for uh, swing traders. We've got, a, uh, we've got a couple of minutes left, so I'm just going to literally quickly switch across to the uh, charts. We'll have a look at like one or two maybe examples just to give you a little bit of a quick uh, example. So if you just bear with me one moment. So what we've got uh, here is, I uh, hope you can see this, is the uh, Admiral Markets uh, MT4 page, Supreme Edition, okay, it's a wonderful plugin to have. And uh, what I've just uh, got on here is, you know, just open up a chart here on, uh, this is on Euro New Zealand dollar, okay, in the weekly chart. Now, uh, what are we just saying is, just move this out of the way a little bit, is that, you know, normally what we'll be looking at is, as I say, just going in and drawing in significant levels of uh, support and resistance that we can, uh, that we can see that we notice price are, uh, is very keen around okay just adapt that a little bit okay just always looking at and where this is where fractals can actually help us they might look a little it might be difficult to pick them out on uh, your own charts if you don't know what a fractal is you want to know how to find it we go up to uh, insert indicators go down to bill williams and you'll find them you'll find them there okay and i thought i might just try and make mine a little bit black just a little bit bigger so maybe you might be able to a little bit clearer for you on this particular uh, on this particular chart, and you know that's what we're looking at, just drawing in those particular significant levels of support where we where we see price reacting constantly. That's just something of uh, of particular uh, interest to us, and you know on the the daily chart as well. But what we're looking for in particular here on the weekly chart, I have my stochastic here, and I have you can see. I have my uh, cursor. You can see that you know I've got my uh, here at 955, the center 955, and we can see that you know what I've done is just literally drawn in. Okay, you can see that you know what we have is that um, you know we have the <clears throat> you know we've got our stochastic indicator here. You know and what we're looking at is it's a case of where we've got the stochastic uh, uh, indicator itself. Okay, the green, and then you've got the sort of signal line. And you can see the stochastic is much faster than the signal line. So when it crosses up. 
Okay, I draw a, uh, uh, just a draw, just a simple green vertical line because it tells me that I'm in a bullish phase and then it kind of drops and then it's bearish and it's bullish, it's bearish, bullish and presently we are, presently we're in a bearish phase there, aren't we? We can see, so, you know, suddenly I start to get interested when I go down to the four hour chart, okay, to look at, well, you know, what happens here, okay, so, just move this out of the way a little more. Well, you know, what I can see is that, you know, here we've had, you know, this is price where the 20 has crossed the, the 50. So I know that we're in a bear momentum. And I know that invariably what we've had is a, is a case of, you know, the price is beneath and then price pulls back. In this particular case, it puts in, you know, it puts in our, here we go. <clears throat> it puts in, you know, it puts in our uh, uh, triggers. Okay, we can see that actually, you know, it's sort of, uh, it runs and plays, it runs and plays away as the as the market sort of just grinds its way south. It's not the most, it's not the most pretty of uh, downward uh, trends, but what we know is that you know it's just grinding its way down there. Okay, and if I just uh, let's see if uh, you know what I'm kind of interested here. This was this this was a uh, this was an inside bar here. Okay, where this was a little bit different, but it was an inside bar. This calendar, this bar here, just shows something a little bit little bit different to okay, that you know price had, price was grinding its way down but when it came back up put itself in as an inside bar and then effectively it kind of just came back up it hit its kind of 50 percent 50 percent error and it's moved its way down to the sort of 261 there okay and that's what we're particularly looking for right we can just use the 50 percent entry right with the 261 target here okay and that actually sort of just takes us down and away again. Okay? So we just we're just looking to sort of just take quick simple swings, okay, which might be open for a few hours or a few days, just to sort of end the uh, as we join the kind of what is the sort of dominant swing trade there, right? So as I said, take it away, sort of just look at it on your own charts, okay? Identify where you can uh, identify where the sort of uh, the weekly momentum and the four hour uh, uh, four hour price and moving averages are in alignment, and that allows you an opportunity, gives you a filter to start to look at trying to identify some some sort of swing trades to sort of join the uh, the dominant trend. And you now have in terms of using price action. You've got pin bars, inside bars, and golfing candles that will give you the opportunity to give you to provide you a few uh, a few useful triggers as the uh, as the trade plays out. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you uh, found that useful for today's session. Hope that uh, hope that uh, kind of uh, helped you. Hope that uh, that uh, gives you a little bit more insight. As I said, don't be you know you've, if you're uh, you're very welcome to join us on Traders Yard. Okay, I'll be there for about the next half an hour or so. Uh, Vincenzo says thank you. See you next time. As always, Vincenzo, thanks very much for joining us here, and uh, I hope to see a few of you in the Traders Yard community. And uh, I look forward to speaking to you soon. Many thanks, ladies and gentlemen.